Hi, my name is Laura Stoutenberg, and I'm a teaching and learning consultant here at Conestoga College. As part of our pathway series of videos for faculty who are new to teaching here at Conestoga, I'd like to walk you through how to read your course outline and um, talk about it in, in terms of how your course outline can help you get ready for teaching your class. So we will talk first about what is a course outline. We'll show you how to find your course outline. And uh, then we're going to look at, at the various uh, components of a course outline, including uh, the name, code, and version, the description, uh, resources, course learning outcomes and unit outcomes, essential employability skills, and evaluations. First of all, what is a course outline? So according to the Conestoga Evaluation of Student Learning Policy, a course outline is an official approved document outlining the course and unit learning outcomes, required resources, and the evaluation components for the course. So it's what your students can expect to learn and how your students can expect to have their learning evaluated. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how to find your course outline. So the easiest way is to look on the front page of your Econostoga course shell once you receive your Econostoga course shell, and you'll find that there's an icon that says View Course Outline. However, what if you want to look at your course outline before the Econostoga shell is, is generated, or if you want to look at another course outline. Let me show you how to find the course outline on your employee portal. So here we find ourselves in the Conestoga employee portal. And I am going to go over to the course outline and click. And here is where, if you know the course code, you can type it in. That's what I'm going to do. You could also uh, type in the course title. So biz 1021, I want the academic year 22-23 uh, because I'm going to be teaching in September of 22. So I click on search and I choose the outline. So I can either look at the individual elements right within the course outline um, feature of the portal or I can click on the print outline which I'm going to do and once I click on that what should happen is the court outline um, PDF should appear on the bottom left I will click on that and here I have my course outline I'm going to make it a little bit bigger let's look first at the the course name which here is organizational behavior uh, the course code which is biz 1021 that number one at the beginning of the, the number series tells me that it is um, a course that's eligible for either a certificate or diploma. If there were an eight at the beginning, it would mean it was a grad cert program. And if there were a seven at the beginning, uh, that would mean that it is part of a degree program. Then I'm looking here at the version. If it was 100, it means it's the very first version of this course. If it's a 101 or a 102, it means that there have been enough changes um, since the first version to merit a new version. So here I am looking at um, um, organizational behavior biz 1021. Let's look next at the course description. So you're going to see here a succinct description of the learning content and activities that can be expected uh, during this course. We're not going to talk about PLAR at this point uh, because it's not relevant for your immediate uh, course preparation. However, resources are. So let's talk a little bit about the resources. So you might find a textbook um, listed here. In the case of organizational behavior, you see that the course is part of the eText program. What that means is that students pay for, um, for uh, electronic access to a text as part of their tuition, and there will be a link to, um, their, to their text 
in the course shell. And you will find those links in the model shell if you have access to a model shell. If there isn't a model shell available to you, uh, I will put links below this video so that, that can help you um, get access to whatever e-text is named here under resources. So the next really important piece to, to become familiar with are the course learning outcomes. And these are so important that it merits um, stopping here and talking a little bit about the definition of what course learning outcomes even are. So course learning outcomes, according to the Conestoga Evaluation of Student Learning Policy, are terminal statements that indicate what a student is reliably expected to demonstrate at the end of a course and upon which they are formally evaluated through grade allocation. So it's capturing the knowledge, the skills and the attitudes that students will acquire and demonstrate um, throughout the course. You can see in um, this course outline that there are six course learning outcomes. And that is pretty standard. Between six and eight is a pretty standard uh, number of course learning outcomes. You can notice that they all start with a verb and they give the context in which uh, the learning will take uh, place. The next element as you can see here, is called the Essential Employability Skills Addressed in this course. And so for all of the um, ministry funded certificate and diploma programs, there will be a chart naming the employ essential employability skills, communication, numeracy, critical thinking, problem solving, information management, interpersonal and personal skills. And for each, it will be noted how, uh, which of these are being taught, which are being reinforced, and which are being assessed through the process of the course itself. And so this is a really helpful um, chart for you to have a look at and to be aware of in terms of realizing that students are building basic employability skills at the same time that they are uh, building more specific skills and knowledge uh, in the course that you're teaching. The next element uh, that you'll find in the um, course outline is the element of unit outcomes. And again, these are pretty important, so let's pause and have a, a bit of a definition. As we saw, course learning outcomes were terminal statements. So unit outcomes relate back to those course outcomes in such a way that the integration of all the unit outcomes will ensure students are meeting all the course outcomes. So unit outcomes help determine the content that is required within the course in order to achieve those final course learning outcomes. So each of the, of the unit outcomes begin with the title, and they're followed by a series of statements that begin with the verb and include the context of the verb. Every outline is going to be different. This particular um, course outline has 11 um, unit units. And if you are provided with an instructional plan that has already been um, created, you'll find that the course uh, learning outcomes and the unit outcomes have been spread throughout the semester, even in the instructional plan, in such a way um, that supports the students' uh, progressive learning. If you, if you don't have an instructional plan and you're creating one, that's what you want to do. You want to decide what makes the most sense, how can I um, guide the students through the learning process um, chronologically throughout the semester. The last piece I would like to point out is the evaluation. So in the course outline, uh, you'll, you'll be reminded what the passing uh, grade for this particular course is, and there will be a series of assessments described. Um, the quantity of each will be stated, and the percentage for each category will be stated. So 
the, the whoever is um, creating the instructional plan, whether it's you or whether it is a uh, someone who's giving curriculum guidance, uh, that person has a bit of freedom within this structure. What that means is from semester to semester, they might change, for example, if you've got a written assignment, you need to have a written assignment and you need to have one and it needs to be worth 30% because that's what it states in the course outline. But you can change the instructions, you can change the nature of the rich written assignment um, uh, within the year of this course outline. Similarly, here in this course outline, it says that you need to have two reflection assignments and it needs to be worth 30%. You don't want to change that from one semester to, to the next, but the, the nature of the reflection of assignment can be adapted um, from, from one semester to the next based on um, the experience of working with the students. I hope you found this brief walkthrough helpful. For any assistance with preparing to teach your course, feel free to contact us at teachingandlearning at conestogac.on.ca. And for further information and support regarding curriculum, please reach out to Curriculum Planning and Operations at conestogac.on.ca. And I hope you have a wonderful first semester.